Okay, so with a ontology and an epistemology, you can now frame your theoretical perspective. Now this is really important because it determines often what you research and how you go about researching. So there are again a range of theoretical perspectives you can take. Um, probably the most well, recognisable would be positivism. This is epitomised by the tra traditional scientific method. There is knowledge out there and we take an approach where we try to minimise the variables that are involved in understanding what's happening and we take measurements and then through hypothesis testing we can have a statistical understanding of whether or not that hypothesis has been um, shown correct or disproven and we can then make an assertion about reality based upon that process. It takes the view that um, knowledge exists out there and we are going through a rigorous applied process and we try to remove as much subjectivity as possible. We, the researchers shouldn't be influencing the results um, and no other extraneous variables should impact upon the pure research that is achieved through the positivist process. Now, post-positivism um, tried to address some of the obvious problems with positivism, which is primarily around researcher bias. Um, we can never perfectly get to a research process that doesn't have some interpretation needed by a human being, um, or at least some process that involves interpretation. So post-positivists accept that we can never achieve that pure scientific process and that there is always going to be some interpretation. But that's okay. We can have a range of different perspectives on the truth that is being uncovered. We still try to minimise um, the biases and influences of the researcher, but we accept that they are going to exist. Then we have interpretivist perspectives. Um, now, an interpretivist um, is really arguing that positivism is not a great thing, that interpreta interpretation can actually reveal a lot, and that if we take a purely positivist perspective, we can lose a lot of our understanding of the universe by not accepting that interpretation is part of the process. So it's, very, it's a very different logical approach um, and we'll discuss it as in the tutorials in more detail with some examples. But essentially, um, interpretivists accept that we can actually immerse ourselves in the data um, the most famous of these was an ethnographic study done by James Goodall where she lived with great apes for a number of years and she was able to come to a really detailed understanding of how apes lived that wouldn't have been possible through a controlled scientific experiment, at least not in any way achieve achievable to the extent of what her study was able to achieve through an interpretivist approach to research. And we do use interpretivism quite a bit in education. So there are some other perspectives though. Critical theory takes another approach to research, which is essentially trying to identify, um, really taking those biases to their extreme and looking at where there is undue um, power relationships being applied and how they influence our perspective on the world. Now, feminism and um, is probably the most uh, clear-cut of the critical theories, where it looks at how a particular perspective on the world, dominated by masculinity and power relationships, have influenced our understanding of reality and our understanding of knowledge. And then finally, there's pragmatism which tries to draw from all of these theories and without committing to any of them too far, um, essentially takes the approach that however we gain knowledge can be useful and we can gain it through a whole range of different approaches and then build 
an understanding from that. So they're a range of theoretical perspectives. And there are a number of different constructions and subcategories of those that you can explore and try to build an understanding of where your approach would be. Now, your approach can often be different depending upon the research question you may be investigating. Some questions you may explore from a post-positivist a post or positivist perspective. Of course, they lend themselves to investigation through that particular approach. Other questions may lend themselves to a critical theory approach or a pragmatist approach or any of the other approaches, um, particularly those around, say, phenomenology or human, humanistics and things of that nature. So you don't have to be committed to one theoretical perspective and just stick with that. You can change your theoretical perspective depending upon different approaches. Generally, you should still try to remain true to your epistemology and your ontology, but again, they can also be somewhat flexible. What's important, though, is that you articulate your theoretical perspective, your ontology and your epistemology, so that those that are exploring your research, such as reading your research papers and so forth, can understand how you've approached the research. Of course, if you've approached it in a way that is quite radically different to their particular perspective of how you've approached it, then there can be misinterpretation.